He's the president of finance at NYU's Stern School of Business. Welcome back. It's nice to see you. Thank you for having me. I feel like, you know, it's becoming a bit of a broken record. I mean, we have you on. Tech stocks <laughs> go up. NASDAQ extends its record high. And I ask you the same questions because they're the only questions that really seem to matter right, right now. But your answers might have changed because the stocks continue to go up and the valuations theoretically are getting more extended. How do you answer it now? It's a bit like Groundhog Day, you're absolutely right. We talk about the same issues over and over. But collectively, these seven stocks have had, I mean, it's not just the last six months. We look at last year and a half, they've added $8.8 .8 trillion in market cap, just these seven companies. Just to give you perspective, the second largest market in the world, China, is a market cap of $12.1 trillion. These seven stocks alone have added more in market cap than the entire German market, the French market, the Swiss market. It's been an astonishing run. But I would also argue that before we dismiss these as risky tech companies, these are the money machines in this market. So when Jeremy Siegel talked about value stocks, I think in many ways these have become the value stocks for investors who care about earnings and cash flows because these are the companies that are delivering those earnings and cash flows. Wow. So, so, you, so you don't necessarily think that we're in any kind of danger zone in terms of valuation here? Now, if we're in danger zone, it's not just the seven stocks that are in the danger zone of tech stocks. It's a market overall. I mean, I compute a monthly market equity risk premium. It's my personal indicator of how hot or cold the market is. Start of July, that equity risk premium, the implied equity risk premium for the market is 4.11 percent. That's the lowest number it's been since September of 2008. In other words, it's almost as if the market has raised the last 15 years, and we're looking at numbers very much like they, what they used to be before the big crisis, the 2008 crisis. And the question we can ask is, is the market overreaching on that assumption? But a 4% T-bond rate and a 4.11% equity risk premium is 2005-2006 numbers, not 2018 or 2019 numbers. I mean, does that does that tell you that we might be heading into a, a certain place we need to be aware of? Yeah, I think we need to be careful. I think four percent to me is a red red flag, at least from the numbers I've looked at historically. Once equity risk premiums drop below four percent, it's almost like a magnet pulling them back towards a four percent. So I'm going to track that number, and I track it at the start of every month. And at the moment, I think we're getting to a point where even pre-2008 status, you'd say this market is reaching you know, a, a, a zone where you, you might need a correction to clean it up again. Hmm. I think what's interesting is you also make the point that the market is not being driven by rate cut expectations. Now, once the, I'll, I'll grant you that because it feels like we recently anyway, stopped obsessing over the Fed. However, however, today we're thinking about it again because we got a, the jobs report. The okay. Fed chair himself is on the Hill for two days next week, and we're going to have more inflation data coming down the pike in, in the next handful of days or so. And we're going to start thinking about rate cut expectations. And I think at this point, there's a pretty good expectation, and it shows in the market futures itself of September, December cuts coming. So we must be pricing it in at least a little bit. Let me suggest an alternative a, a narrative, which is, let's say rate cuts happen. The Fed cuts rates in September, December. But let's say U.S. Treasury rates, especially at the long end, don't change very much. In a sense, the market's saying the rate cuts happened. T-bill rates, might, the, the, short, uh, the, the short end of the Treasuries might be affected. But my point is that the market seems to be going up in spite of rate cuts not happening. It's almost as if the market has decided there's a different narrative driving it. And I think the closer we get to November, I think the less rate cuts are going to be the issue and more the issue is going to be what's going to happen on tariffs and taxes, which are going to be driven by what happens in the election.